most kindness. Prophet again said, it's your mother. And then the fourth time when Prophet read, he asked this question, Prophet said, your father. So it just shows the level uh, what a mother holds in a religion, right? The respect that we should be giving to, to her and, and fathers, of course. Um, like I, I uh, recited last night, um, so there are three things which Allah has prohibited, right? Uh, so the first one is actually shirk. Um, and, and the second thing that we discussed just after shirk was actually the disobedience of, of, your, of your parents. So again, the emphasis is on um, how important that relationship is for us and what should we do to make sure that we're fulfilling the responsibility. Two narrations that uh, I want to read out here, Prophet. Um, so one is, a man approached and said, I have committed a major sin, right? So we know what, what are the major sins. Um, I think here we're talking about Zina. So the Prophet says to say, do you have a mother or is your mother alive? So just imagine, right? We're talking about a major sin and someone's coming to Prophet Sallallahu and asking, I will have committed a major sin, what should I do? So the, what Prophet Sallallahu is asking that person is, do you have a mother? So, or is your mother alive? So he said, uh, he said no. So then Prophet Sallallahu said, well, what about your mother's sister, which is your khala, basically, your aunt? See, so he said, yes. So the, the point, basically, what, what I'm trying to make here is that look at the, just not the importance of your mother, but also someone who is related to your mother. So if we are saying that our aunt uh, from our maternal side deserves this, this much love or respect, then just imagine what about our actual mother, right? Our actual father. A uh, generation from Ibn Abbas, a man came uh, and was guilty of murder. So, and, and the reason why he committed murder because he got jealous of someone. So uh, Ibn Abbas responded, again, the same thing what we have heard from the previous narration that he said, is your mother alive? So the companions, once that, um, so is your mother alive? Um, the person said, no, Ibn Abbas said, well, Ibn Abbas asked that person to go and ask forgiveness from Allah. So when that person left, people asked uh, Ibn Abbas, why did you ask him about the mother? So he said, I couldn't think of anything that is of more goodness than serving your mother. And we're talking about a murder here. Now, the legal proceedings are different, right? If someone commits a murder, that is separate. But the important that Ibn Abbas was trying to tell um, is, if you have your mother, then go and seek her pleasure. Uh, go in and make sure that you fulfill her, your responsibilities towards him. And, and then... The third one that I want to talk about is actually uh, for father. The Prophet, the Prophet said that the pleasure of, of the father is actually the pleasure of anyone? anyone? Allah. Allah, right? So if, if we are successful in getting the pleasure of our father, it is actually the same as we're getting the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there was there was a it, back in that time there was a, um, a person by by the name of Oves Kerni. So I, uh, Hazrat Omar uh, actually went. So, uh, in some narrations say it was time for, during Hajj, but some say uh, any time there was a caravan that used to come from Yemen. Hazrat Omar asked used to ask, "Is there any person by the name of Oves Kerni?" So one year passed by, there was no one. Second year passed by, no one. Finally, um, when the, when a caravan came, people said, "Yes, we have someone who is from uh, who's called known by the name of Oveskar." So Adil Omar asked, "Actually, well, I want to go and see see that person." So um, he was actually by the lake. Uh, Adil Omar uh, went him and asked him that I want you to make dua for me. So he said, "Amir al-Mu'minin, you are the Amir al-Mu'minin, right?" You're asking me to make dua? You're the ones who have been granted Jannah, right? So one of the tens that we know, Hazrat uh, Umar, Hazrat Abu Bakr, they're one of those who have been granted Jannah. So he said, Hazrat Umar said, I heard from Prophet who has never met Oves um, Karni, said, anytime you are able to find Oves Karni, this person who is from Quraysh, uh, all this um, tribe, and I mean, there were a few things which uh, actually Hazrat Umar asked. Uh, before verifying, okay, that he is the person. 
So he said, if you see that person, ask him to make dua for you, to make maqfirah for you. But right now we're talking about someone who is actually forgiven, right? But then they are going to that person, Hazrat Omar, and asking him for, for forgiveness. And he said, the reason, so that person asked, why are you asking me? So he said, the way you have served your mother, Allah has elevated your status. So again, it's coming to the respect of parents, right? Um, um, and I was actually listening to one of the lecture um, for, when I was preparing for today, but actually one of the lectures I was listening was Fad Bajwan, and he said, if you are having difficulty in your life, just take a step back and see how is your relationship with your father and your mother. Again, if you're having some difficulty in your life, what you need to do is take a step back and see what is your relationship again with your father and mother. Now again, you know, someone might say, well, yeah, it is good, but do are we really following what we have learned and heard and read that, you know, you shouldn't even be saying, oh, you know, sometimes we roll our eyes. Uh, this is even worse than just just saying oh right just imagine what it goes i'm sure a lot of people here most of us are our parents here but just imagine if our kids come to us and, and they just roll their eyes how are we going to feel right um the again the prophet said there are three people who will not go to jannah out of which one is disobedient to parents so again connected to what we talked earlier when allah said uh, about you know don't do shirk and be obedient this is the same what Prophet is, Prophet is connecting that the three people who will not go to Jannah, one of them is actually a person who is disobedient to, to his parents. And the second one who is someone who, who is alcoholic or, or who drinks. And then the third one is um, who, and this is astonishing, it is so common these days, um, and I'm sure I'm guilty of that too. If you do a favor for someone and you remind them that you have done a favor for so we're talking about three people who, are not, who will not go to Jannah. Again, one is someone who is disobedient to, to uh, his parents. The second one is someone who is alcoholic or who drinks. And the third one is actually who reminds people that, hey, I did a favor for you. Um, and, and one thing um, I want to connect here, which actually happened with me, uh, just two months ago, and I share with everyone here at the masjid. And, and the reason I'm sharing is because we should be doing stuff before it gets too late, right? So, um, I got a call. I'm part of this uh, pharmacological secretary management, right? So, I got a call from a sister who was coming from out of state. Uh, I think she was coming from Missouri. And her mother passed away. And and she called me and said, well, they are towards the, towards the cemetery. Is there any way you can stop that burial process so I can just come and at least see my mother for the last time. So for us, there, I mean, there are a lot of people here, I'm sure, uh, whose mothers are alive, but unfortunately, some people here, they, they don't have their mother. So before it gets too late, or before the time comes, you know, that we're, we go in their room and it reminds us that, yes, my mother used to stay here, she used to pray here, all that kind of stuff. It's better to do it while, while she is alive, or, or also for our father. Um, one of the sheikh, he actually, um, and again, I, was, I listened to it when I was preparing for the lecture. He said, um, back in those, we didn't use to have mattresses, right? So wherever his mother used to, used to sleep, he used to go and wipe it with his hand just to make sure there are no rocks, no pebbles, right? But then one, one day he looked at his hand and his hand was so, um, I mean, what's the right term? Um, you know, when you work, sorry? Yeah, but was the hand so hard? Yeah, it got too hard, right? So then he's like, maybe my hands are not feeling at the moment, but what if my mother's back is feeling because it's not as hard as it? So he actually started using his cheek and try to clean it and see if it's, if it's okay for his mother to actually sleep. So just imagine what people used to do back in those days uh, for their parents. and and. Again, I'm the first one actually just to see what is my attitude for towards my mother, right? Uh, and, and also for my for my dad. Um, just a couple of more things I want to talk about is um, so yes, we are busy and stuff in today's world, and also 
um, you know, sometimes our because because of our siblings, our parents don't stay with us all the time. So a sheikh, so, so a person actually asked the sheikh, and he said, "Well, do you take a shower every day?" Right. So he said, "Yes." He said, "Any time you take a shower, and you look at your belly button, this thing that you were connected to your mom for nine months, and she was feeding you during the most critical time of your life." So now, how can you forget, right? I'm sure everyone here takes also. So when I was when I was listening to it, it struck my mind. Well, look at this. It's actually a part of her body that even if we look at it, it reminds that we were actually connected to our mother, and she is the one who actually nourished us nine months during the most critical time of her life. Um, so. Again, and one thing, um, um, now what is that we can do for our parents, right? So, I mean, if, if they are alive or if they're passed away, we should be making dua for them. But Prophet Sallallahu said, a man's status was ele elevated in Jannah. So he asked, why is that? Why, I mean, what is the reason for my status being eleva elevated? So Allah said, it is because your son or your daughter or your, your sister, uh, your children are actually making dua for you. So if, if one of our parents have passed away, or both, or if even if they are alive, what, sh what we should be doing for them is actually making dua. Because if they have passed away, just imagine, because of our dua, their status gets elevated. And then the last thing is, um, for a lot of us, including myself, right? My, I mean, my parents, because we're four siblings, so my parents, Sometimes they're with with my brethren and stuff. So, what is that we should do, right? Because obviously everyone wants wants their parents to live with them. Well, actually, when they're here, be at your best, right? So, they you might feel okay. Well, they're old. There are a few things that you're not liking it. But let's remind ourselves that you know we're not even supposed to say off to them. And when they're not here. Uh, just make sure that you you stay in touch with them. There might be a few. There might be instances where the con if, if you're talking to them, there's no conversation, you know, because you've talked about everything. But at least just try to make sure that you know we reach out to our parents. We do ask them how they're doing, and and alhamdulillah, whenever you we get this chance of serving them, we should just try, you know, to be at our best. Inshallah.